Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you five Develop Module Secrets in Lightroom. The first of our secrets to reveal is Smarter Virtual Copies. Often when you're working in Lightroom, you'll take an image to a certain point and then you'll look at it and think, well, what if I did something different to it? Well, you can do that by creating a virtual copy. I've taken this image quite a long way in the edits, but I want to try a different way of editing it. I'll right click it and choose Create Virtual Copy. Now when I go to the virtual copy, which is this one selected here, when I open the history panel, you can see that its starting point is the virtual copy. But this image didn't look anything like this out of the camera. But I don't have any movement here in the history panel. I can't wind the image back any further because the starting point for this is the virtual copy itself. But down here on the right hand side of the screen, I do. In the Develop module over here at the very bottom right of the Develop module is the Reset button. Click this and you'll return the image to its out of camera state. This is the image as shot, so I can now take it forward in a different direction. So far so good, we've been able to create a virtual copy and take the image back to its original state. Let's go back to our edited version. What would happen, for example, if we didn't want to take the image back to its original state, but we wanted to start it halfway through the processing? The history panel here will show you all the processing that you have applied to the image. I converted it to black and white at this point. What I want to do is to compare the black and white version of this image with a different process, but I don't want to wind it all the way back to the beginning. I really want it to look like this as its starting point for the virtual copy. Well, I can do that by just selecting the state here in the history panel. I can create a virtual copy. That starting point looks like this. The history panel has a list of all the changes that you've made to the image, and the most recent is at the top, so we've wound that quite a ways. I'm going to right click here and choose Create Virtual Copy. And here is the virtual copy whose starting point is the, exactly the same position as this image is at right now. But a word of warning here, this is the virtual copy that we just created, and this is the image that we created it from. But remember, this was a black and white image a few minutes ago. And if you don't want to lose those settings, you're going to need to come back to this image and click on the last of the adjustments to return it to what it looked like before you wound it back. It's important to do that immediately you've created the virtual copy. Otherwise, chances are that you'll forget what you've done and you might come back to this image and make changes to it. If you're back here and you make a change to the image at this point, watch what happens to all the subsequent edits. You can see that they're lost. You certainly don't want to do that by accident. Now, I know what I've done, so I'm just going to undo it now and then wind back to that. But you will want to make sure that you come back to your image immediately you've created the virtual copy and just take it forward to the point that it currently is. Otherwise, you run a risk of losing those changes. Our second secret is comparing before and after. In Lightroom, you can compare the before and after for any image edit by pressing the backslash key. I'm in the develop module. When I press the backslash, I go back to the before, the out of camera settings for this image. Press backslash again and I go to the most recent edit to the image. But what if I want to compare before and after, but not all the way back to the out of camera image? Here I added a graduated filter to this image, and I want to see the before and after as being just before the graduated filter was added, and then after the graduated filter was added. So I'm going to click here on the state immediately before the graduated filter was added. I'll right click and choose Copy History Step Settings to Before. And now I'm going to select back on the most recent edit to the image. Now when I press the backslash key, the before is the before image just before that graduated filter was added, and the after is with the graduated filter added to it. You can choose any of the settings here in the history panel to make your before settings. Just right click and choose copy history step settings to before, but make sure that you reselect the most recent edit before you go and press your backslash key, or you won't see what you expect to see. Our third Lightroom Develop secret is Reverse Engineering Presets. 
This image here has had a preset applied to it, the new Autumn preset. Now presets which are shipped with Lightroom or those that you download from the web simply contain edits that are applied through the usual tools in the develop module. A developer can do nothing in a preset that you can't do manually by adjusting the sliders here in the develop module. So if you want to learn a little bit about photo editing by looking at presets, here's how to do it. Wind your image back to its out of camera setting. If necessary, press reset to do so. And then apply the preset to the image. When you do this, any change of any setting here in the develop module, the preset is responsible for. So you can see that this preset has an increase in exposure and contrast. Highlights are brought down, shadows are brought up, whites are up, blacks are down, clarity's down, and so on. You can also check the tone curve. Well, there's nothing here. You can check split toning and detail. Check for effects such as a vignette. Again, there's nothing here. But there are other things that can be applied through a preset, and two of those are graduated filters and radial filter adjustments. To see these, click on the graduated filter and make sure that you have Show Edit Pins set to Always. So we can see here that there are two graduated filters applied to this image through that preset. To see more about that graduated filter, I'm just going to click on the pin. You could see that when I hovered over it, I could see the extent to which the graduated filter is applied. It's obviously been attached to the bottom of the image and dragged upwards. And the graduated filter has a severe reduction in clarity and sharpness. And there's one down here too. Well, it's been dragged from the top down, and it too has a reduction in clarity, but an increase in contrast and shadows. If there were radial filter adjustments, when we click on the radial filter, and if we have Show Edit Pin set to Always, we would see those radial filter adjustments. It's obvious that there are none applied using this preset. You won't need to select to view the Adjustment Brush, because Adjustment Brush edits cannot be saved inside presets. By applying a preset to an unedited version of your image, you get a chance to reverse engineer them and learn a little bit more about how other people edit images, information that can help you as you edit your images. Our fourth Lightroom Develop secret is that the Alt key works practically everywhere. The Alt key is pretty much the best kept secret in Lightroom. When you hold down the Alt key, various things will change in Lightroom. For example, you can see that Set Default is changing from Reset to Set Default by just holding down the Alt key. Here in the Basic panel, you'll find that things like Reset Tone and Reset Presence appear when the Alt key is selected. The Alt key also works when you're making adjustments to the image. If I hold the Alt key and adjust Exposure, you'll see that I'm able to see the exposure on this image. So too with whites, and when I adjust blacks. You can also use the Alt key when adjusting for split toning. So for example, if you hold the Alt key down as you drag on one of these hue sliders, you'll see the color that's going to be applied to the highlights or the shadows of the image when you apply a split tone to the image. Now you're not actually applying the split tone until you adjust saturation, but the Alt key allows you to preview the colors that you are going to be using. It also works in the sharpening module. So for example here, I have a high mask on this image, and holding down the Alt key shows me the mask as applied to the image. There's also Alt key visualizations applied to the amount, where you can see the luminosity, which is what is sharpened in Lightroom. When I select the radius, there's also feedback here when I hold down the Alt key, and so too with detail. As you work through the develop module in Lightroom, it will pay to hold down the Alt key and just see if there's something there that it will do that is unexpected and not very easy, I'll admit, to see. Our final develop module secret is Smarter Keyboard Adjustments. When you're making adjustments to sliders in Lightroom, you might find it a little difficult to get the sliders to work the way you want to. You might find that your mouse tends to jump a little bit. Well, you can just click on a slider to select it, and then use the left and right arrow keys to adjust that slider. 
Just click on any of these sliders. Up arrow works the same as the right arrow and down arrow works the same as the left arrow. If you want to take a larger step, click on a slider and press Shift up arrow or Shift right arrow. To take a larger step in the other direction, Shift down arrow or Shift left arrow. You can also make adjustments by clicking on the number here. If you press the up and down arrow key, you'll be taken in small steps up or down. If you still want to use your sliders but you find that they travel too fast for you, then hold the Shift key as you actually drag on a slider. When you do that, you'll find that the progress of the slider is reduced significantly. You have to drag a long way to get it to move one or two numbers. The Shift key slows down the slider, making it easier for you to find and select the exact value that you want for that slider. And of course, at any time, if you want to return a slider to its original value, just double click its name. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And subscribe to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.